Welcome to our IC Tales listener. Hope you all are having a great day. Today we have with us Sindhu Vasudevan. She is a singer and an amazing classical dancer. She is the founder of Surdarbar, a platform for budding musicians and also ATX Adevo. She is also the lead vocalist for Grammy nominated band Berkeley Indian Ensemble. Today we will be discussing her inspiring journey. Her views on performing arts and how she plans to progress in this field. Welcome, Sindhu. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. How does it feel to be here? It's awesome. I'm so excited to be doing this Thank interview. You. And Me too. I just like to take a moment to thank I see Tales for this opportunity. Thank you. So, um, uh, so tell us a bit about yourself. How did it all begin? How did you get into singing and dancing? Um, so I actually started singing and dancing as a really young kid. Um, I kind of so my brother started learning music, and I would just go to his classes um, and just sit in the back and listen. Um, and there was, I think it was when I was five or six, maybe four or five, actually. Oh. Um, during Navratri, I decided that I was going to sing a song at my house. And my parents were mm -hmm. extremely shocked um, because they were like, you don't know how to sing. Like, I don't know how you're going to do this. Um, but I ended up I ended up singing and they were like, you know, she's actually not bad. So let's put her in <laughs> um, lessons. And so I started taking lessons when I was around five, five and a half. Um, and I also um, my family in general is like very artistic. Um, I wouldn't say like I don't have any performers necessarily in my family, but um, everybody enjoys music. Everybody enjoys the arts, dance. Um, and then for dance, my grandmother and my mother are both dancers. So I kind of got into the lineage of being another dancer in the family. Um, but both my both my mom and my uh, grandmother were both teaching dance also when they lived in India. So it was a big part of their life that they kind of just passed down to me. Um, but yeah, it's just been, I think it's just been ever evolving. Um, and I think after I moved to Austin about six years ago, I kind of got um, exposed to different forms of music also. And I think that's kind of, those are kind of my transformative years when I was in high school too. So that gave me an opportunity to, you know, kind of open my horizons and explore music for what it is. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about me. So it, it was all in the genes. <laughs> <From the way. laughs> yes. Yeah, so, it was definitely a lot of my parents' um, push when I was a kid. So That's great. So what's the important importance of performing arts in your life? Um, I think it's my, like, they call it, they, they say you should have an emotional outlet. Um, I think that's wow. my emotional outlet, my, my creative outlet. Um, I think I've always seen art to be my like solace so when I'm stressed at, at uh, school or you know I after a, a really tiring week at college I'm always either singing or dancing at the end of the week um, to kind of get rid of that stress but I think art has always been that place of like calm and peace for me um, more so as I've gotten older just because I think as you get older, you have a lot more responsibility and yeah. a lot more stress that adds on. Can so, relate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's defi definitely something that's given me more peace. I think when I was a kid, it was just something I did for fun. Um, but now it's definitely something that I cherish a lot and my music and dance means a lot to me, so. You're amazing in it, so kudos to that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So uh, you have also founded this uh, platform called Surdarbar. It is also for all your musician friends out there. Can you tell us a bit about it? Sure. Um, so I, like I said, I moved to Austin six years ago. Um, and I noticed that um, in Austin, there wasn't much of a community. There was a, definitely a big um, community for, you know, listening to different concerts and that kind of stuff. And avenues for that but I um, found that there was a lack of opportunities for aspiring um, artists or people that were still kind of um, young and developing their talent um, in ways that were like unconventional or not like the traditional um, you know concert format um, 
so I started this with um, my mom actually, and we uh, did this entirely um, like by ourselves, at, like from the design to the production, to the hosting, to the audio equipment, everything was on our own. Um, and we started it in 2019 and then 2020 COVID hit. So um, very, <laughs> very quickly, we were kind of put into isolation. Um, but I think it was more of a boon than it was a bane for us um, because we were able to do a lot more online events and that's kind of where yeah. we like grew. Um, and that was kind of like the peak of our uh, growth, I would say for sure. We did a lot of online events, which kind of led us to also be able to interact with artists, not only in the US, but also in other parts of the world too. And I think that was really awesome for us to do. Um, there were so many events that we did we did a lot of game shows. We did a lot of interviews, a lot of panel discussions. Um, we even did like a an entire series on just women composers. Um, so just um, highlighting different things that it's not traditionally highlighted in in a musical organization. I think that was our goal, and to give a voice to the um, aspiring or you know passionate like young musicians um, young artists that are kind of finding their way around the industry um, I think that's something that I wish I had so I wanted to provide that for other people too that is great uh, so how would you describe the type of music you typically sing or create um that's a very hard question for me to answer I <laughs> think, honestly. um I since I'm so like my foundation is completely in Indian classical music um being trained in both Karnatic and Hindustani I think my foundation in that was very strong but then when I got older I started training in western classical as well so definitely classical music is my foundation but I would say I I would say I'm an Indian classical <clears throat> or I'm an Indian musician with many influences of jazz and R&B um so oh. that's like my that's like my um the best way I could categorize my uh music that um, actually sounds of... cool to me <laughs> thank you um but yeah it's just um something that I I feel like I was I'm very heavily influenced by R&B and jazz especially as I got older and like started to like I said like open my horizons and listen to other forms of music um so I'm definitely an Indian musician with a with a hint of R&B and jazz. So. Yeah. <laughs> so what is it about R&B and jazz in particular? Um, <laughs> I think jazz particularly um, is very similar to Indian music um, in its theory, in its ways of being performed, in the way that it's very like improvisational. Um, and so I think I connected immediately with jazz because of, and it gave me like that feeling of comfort almost because I was like, oh, this is like familiar territory. Um, so that, that's like jazz. That's like R and B is just something that I've I've heard a lot growing up, especially living in the U.S. Completely born and brought up here. Um, I have heard a lot of R and B around me, and I think just like the musicians that sing R and B have like their own style and their own like kind of mojo to. Uh, singing so I wanted something like that in my music too so you sing in like bunch of languages you also sing in Hindi you sing Tamil you also sang Chandra you you <laughs> which yeah you all over this. so which <laughs> language do you most be comfortable in or what is it um I don't know if I can say I'm most comfortable in a certain language um my family is also from too many places in India for me to even say I have a hometown or a mother like uh, mother tongue so I definitely I don't know if I can associate with one language necessarily but I think I really enjoy listening to Hindi and Tamar the most um, but I think I've recently really been into um, Bengali and Marathi songs oh. so yeah um, but I think like the whole languages thing started because for my 16th birthday when I was I think when I was um, probably 11 or 12 I set out a goal for myself that by the time I turn 16 I will be singing in 16 languages um, and so oh. 
was um that was my goal that I set out and that's and huge was... responsibilities for a 16 year old <laughs> yeah I was I was quite the ambitious child but I <laughs> I was very excited to turn 16 and be like uh, I can yeah, sing 16 yeah. languages and comfortably that too um so yeah I think that that was kind of I, I've always been interested in languages and you know cultures and exploring more of different cultures that I'm not so familiar with. I feel like India is already so diverse in its cultures um, within different parts that I was already like, wow, this is incredible. And as you learn the language, you learn their music, you learn their culture too. So <clears throat> yeah, so I kind of started out with my 16th birthday aspiration and then just kind of grew from there. So yeah, as you mentioned Marathi, so is it like Ajay Antul music that you're, uh, do you know them? They are the most uh, famous uh, Marathi composers. Absolutely. Yeah, I have been obsessed with Ajay Atul since I yeah. was young. Um, I love their their work. Um, and I think I initially got introduced to their side art uh, soundtrack. Yeah. And I, that was my first introduction to them. But yeah, I absolutely love Marathi. I think it's such a, and, and their music is such a, uh, there's so much orchestra and there's a lot of strings involved. So I think that that kind of caught my attention too. Awesome. I'm from Maharashtra, uh, actually from India. Oh, okay. And yeah, <laughs> so I grew up listening to Ajay Atul and I'm so happy that, you know, uh, you also like them too. Yeah, they're awesome. They have been an integral part of my childhood, I can say, because they have been uh, making such awesome music for years and years now. Definitely. Yeah. And I, I feel like they're definitely one of the most underrated composer duos I've, I've seen. Um, I think a lot of people are yet to discover them, which is sad, but hopefully yeah. um, as much as they are but, popular, I feel like they're still pretty underrated for their work. Uh, you can, if Pan India case, then yes. But if you see in Maharashtra, no, they're not yeah. that underrated in Maharashtra. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they're more um, popular. Locally, they're very famous here. They're like superstars. Sure, yeah. <laughs> they're like one direction yeah they're like a huge <laughs> duo here <laughs> so uh you know you seem very much in touch with your indian roots with the indian culture despite of saying in a whole other continent or whole other country so what is it about india that draws you towards its art um i think as a child i was brought up in a very cultured household um we always we never spoke English at home. Um, as much as I say we don't have a mother tongue, like we spoke every Indian language possible in the house, but it was never English. Um, and I think we, we celebrated all the festivals. We went to India often. Um, and I I had many friends that would hate going to India because they didn't like the you know environment there. I I was always the kid that was itching to go back. Um, and I think my oh. brother was the same way. So, and I still am. I still love coming to India. I still love being there. Um, <clears throat> so I think growing up in a very cultured household definitely had a huge role in that. Um, I think also like, especially living in the US, you're kind of surrounded by so many different kinds of people. It's kind of hard okay. to find your space or your identity, especially when you don't look like people in the media, people around you. I went to schools that I was like one of four Indians at. Um, so it was it was a very like isolating feeling almost at first. And I would definitely say as a as a younger kid, I would feel embarrassed sometimes to take like Indian food to school for lunch or um, to wear Indian clothes in front of my friends. But as I've gotten older, it's more of like a this is my culture and I'm super proud of it. And you should be proud of your culture, too. And I think it's important to um I think as I got older, I realized the importance of like being who you are and just being completely authentically that. Um, like, like I can say, I wear jumkas to class and I'm completely proud of it. And I get compliments. And they look super the cool, time. by the way, so now I too. Think... <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, I, I've always loved just like putting my two worlds together because yes, at heart, I am American and I've, I'm born American, but... I've always been super connected to my culture, <clears throat> whether that be language, music, food. Um, I've always been, uh, or clothing even for that matter. 
Um, I think most of my friends would definitely describe my style as also like Indo-Western. I'm always constantly wearing some form of India in me at all times. <laughs> so um, yeah, definitely. I think I think just learning to um, accept like our culture for what it is and be proud of it instead of like being embarrassed because you look different than somebody else is important. It must have been hard for you to adjust to yeah, I think since I was born here, uh, it's something I faced since I was very young. But as I got older, I kind of learned to just be like, okay, this is this is me, and and that's fine. Like I'm completely fine with that. And and in college, I feel a lot of us see um and make other friends that have also gone through the same Indian American experiences, and then we're like, oh, so it's not just me going through this. Um, it's a lot of us. So I think that that really helps to know that like you're not alone in this. Um, and it doesn't even have to go for just like Indian. It can go for Mexican, English, yeah. Italian, like so many. There's so many cultures out there that kind of feel suppressed when you're younger, but you learn to embrace your identity. Absolutely. So you have recently joined a Grammy-nominated band, uh, Berkeley Indian Ensemble. How has your journey been with them? It's been awesome. I love them all so much. Um, I am the baby of the team, uh, <laughs> roughly 15 years younger than all of them. But yeah. I love being there. Um, I love being surrounded by such amazing musicians. They're all super inspiring and super um, well versed in what they do. Um, and so I am I'm, I'm very grateful to be part of the team. And they're they're kind of my go to's for music now. So that's so uh, do you think that performing arts or be it any like be it singing or dancing or be it painting uh, helps in developing developing a personality 100% 100% i think um i think being in the arts um makes you see a lot of a lot of different things that you experience in normal daily life um differently I'll give you an example. Um, something that I always did as a kid and I still continue to do is um, if I hear like a construction like sound outside or the lawn mowers outside, I end up making that my like shruti box or my tanpura and singing along with that. And that kind of just became a thing. And I think it's like a universal, like I have so many friends that do the same thing. So if we hear some like pitch that's like constant, like noise we will make that our <laughs> fun but I think that's something it's like an um, earworm then yeah exactly exactly and so I think uh the arts definitely has a huge impact on the way that you see and go about your own life um and I think you don't many people don't realize that until they get a little bit older um like when you come to college and stuff uh, I, I certainly didn't but I think it has a huge impact on who you are um how how you see things especially and uh and just the once you start getting into art I, I'm not sure if for at least for me I'm not sure I can ever leave it after this so um yeah it's a beautiful beautiful journey following that uh if it wasn't for music and dancing what would you be doing um I don't know honestly um it's it's funny because I I'm actually studying <laughs> public health <laughs> in college um and oh. many people don't know that um they know the music and dance side of me um and, and I think I've kept them two separate worlds um for a long time but I yeah so I have a I have a huge passion for healthcare and for um you know taking care of people and I think that's um what I would love to be doing if I wasn't doing music and dance so yeah that's completely so what is it oh so it's the sort of feeling helping people that gravitated you towards medical yeah um I think I've always been interested um in being in a hospital setting something about it um I think most people and and my friends think I'm so weird for this because most people hate going oh. to the hospital and hate being in environment <laughs> um but I absolutely love it. I think it's thrilling. I think it's like invigorating. Um, I have always found that I liked being in a hospital and liked being where I could I could be of service to people, to be somebody that people could uh, lean on and you know depend and and really trust um, and and make it a certainly make a big impact in their life. Uh, um, 
so I think that's kind of what led me into going into public health or into medicine um yeah that's just something that a lot of people don't know about me is that I'm not studying music in college I'm not um I'm not studying any kind of art form in college it's uh completely on the healthcare side so that's I love your beautiful package <laughs> <laughs> um so I had this uh you are the singer of Enarmu, which came out in 2020, I think. Mm -hmm. You and your brother created it. So when can we expect new songs, original songs? Yeah, um, I'm actually working on quite a few originals um, for this year. And hopefully um, I will have an album out by the end of the year. Um, but I will probably be releasing um, my first original of the year in about March time frame ish so yeah if we hear a few lines since you're here we wouldn't miss the opportunity oh, sure um just give me one second <clears throat> all right i'll sing the i'll sing the bridge um sure. and it's it's not completely done yet but i hope you guys enjoy this um every time we touch Everything is bliss Just stay here in my arms I'm for this Every time we touch Everything is bliss Just stay here in my arms I'm for this Every time we yeah <laughs> voice is so heavenly it's angelic <laughs> thank you thank you thank you yeah you almost reminded me of uh with their works you know she also combines like a uh, songs of two different languages and as I have always found it so cool and now you are that for me <laughs> as cool as well. so uh, so if you uh, what would you like to change about the music industry as since you are a part of it now uh, what do you think if there's a scope of improvement or few things should be you know made here and there better yeah, um, I think just more inclusivity. I think it's really easy for um, in in any creative art for that matter to kind of box yourself into what you're familiar with, what you know, uh, what you've heard in the past. And I think uh, that happens a lot in the industry where we go with what's comfortable, what we know initially, um, but just being open to ideas, being inclusive to you know, different people who come from different backgrounds. I think that's so important. Um, like I can say for myself, my my identity is nowhere close to what most of the Bollywood industry or the film industry looks like right now. Um, but people like Jonita Gandhi have made such a name for themselves um, being an NRI, being somebody who's not from a community that was always surrounded by people that looked like you. And I think it's so awesome to see that because when I was a kid, I remember I was I would always tell my parents like like nobody goes from here like we're different we're not like them and we're kind of like on the outer skirts and I think that that feeling is very isolating so um, I'm glad to see it you know happening it's definitely happening but I think um, just being as inclusive as open minded as we can in the industry to um, be open to people's ideas, to their identities, to their backgrounds is so important. And I think we're doing a very good job of that. I just hope we do more of that um, in the coming years. So lastly, is there a message for your fans that you would like to give us? Oh man, um, I am not, this is not my cup of tea, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I think probably my biggest thing is uh, to not give up on something that you are genuinely passionate about. Um, I think so many people give up on music or give up on the arts because, you know, it doesn't put a roof over your head or, you know, you feel like you're not good enough or um, those are all valid concerns. But 
I think as long as you stay consistent and you're persistent with what you want um, and genuinely work hard and work um, authentically, honestly, I think I think it's really, really, really rewarding to see like your own work pay off so well. Um, and it takes a, it takes a long time. I will also say that it takes a lot of consistent effort and time to get there, but um, it's really worth it. And I, I don't think I'm there where, where I want to be yet, but um, it's it's definitely nice to see the small wins too. So yeah. So I actually really like the point where you said that many artists think that you know maybe writing wouldn't pay well or maybe making your own music wouldn't pay well. But uh, as an artist, I can relate. Like it takes a lot of time and a lot of self confidence to come at this stage where you have. And congratulations! That you're you. above all this anxiety. <laughs> No, I will not say that. I there are so many days that I'm, you know, uninspired, not confident, or like in my head about things. I think it's just taking those days in stride is more important um, because we all have those days. Uh, I think yeah. if you talk to any creative, whether it be Shankar Mahadevan, whether it be like the top line artists, everybody has those insecurities, and I think it's natural. Like we're all human to have those insecurities, but just kind of finding a way to navigate around that is important. Absolutely. I have, I loved having this discussion with you and thank you so much for telling us the importance of performing arts and not giving up on dreams, however long it takes. And you're lucky to have you here. And oh, thanks thank again. you. I'm so excited to be doing this interview again. And thank you again for setting this up. Yeah. As of our IC Tales listener, we'll be back with such amazing content again. Till then, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great day ahead.